Now, have you ever wondered how the uterus and the cervix work together to dilate the cervix um, so that the baby can come down and be born? Well, I'm going to show you using a ball, a ping pong ball, which I've put inside this, um, this balloon. <laughs> so the balloon represents the uterus, that part represents the cervix, and the ball that's actually inside represents the baby's head. You may well have already seen this demonstration. I actually watched it a few years ago from, um, from a YouTube video, a lady called Liz Chalmers, and I thought it's a great uh, demonstration and I've got to show it to my followers. So I'm gonna blow up the balloon first, just so you can see how a, uh, a full-term uterus should be looking. Now, I don't wanna go, I don't wanna blow it up too much because these balloons um, have been sitting in my shed. They were from my old birthday party for quite some time. So I blow it out too much, it's probably gonna, gonna burst. So I'm just gonna show you, it'll stay like that. So if you can imagine, the baby's head is sitting low at the bottom of the uterus. Um, the best place for it to be is kind of right down low at the end of the pregnancy so that it can help put pressure on the cervix to help it with um, the dilatation. That's the cervix there. Usually the cervix is long, it's quite firm, and it's, it's closed. If you've already had a baby before, your cervix may be a little bit open already. So you may well have a cervix that's like a centimeter or so, or maybe even a little bit more, open throughout your entire pregnancy. And that's because the cervix doesn't usually go back down to um, its pre-pregnancy shape once you've had a baby. Through your pregnancy, especially in the latter half, so when you're over 20, 20 weeks, second half of your pregnancy, you may well have been noticing some what we call Braxton Hicks or practice contractions. Now, what happens with Braxton Hicks contractions is it's just the top of your uterus kind of just gently doing this, just cramping up a little bit every now and again, just to exercise the uterus and get it ready for, for the birth. Sometimes they can be quite intense, especially as you get into your third trimester, but they don't do enough to actually do anything to the cervix. They don't make any changes to the cervix usually. What usually happens is it just prepares your, your, your body so that when you go into labor, your body says, hey, I know what I'm doing now. When you do actually go into uh, established or real or full labor, then what happens is the uterus, which is in two segments, so you've got fibers that run up and across the uterus, but the, the top of the uterus starts to contract and it helps to draw up the fibers from the side of the uterus, it draws them up, you'll see in a minute when I start, when I start squeezing, it draws them up and then it helps the cervix to soften and thin, along with the help of some hormones as well, um, pro uh, prostaglandin hormones helps the cervix to soften, helps the cervix to thin and then eventually starts to dilate. So I'll show you, look. So you can probably see here, so this is the top of the womb. So I'm kind of having contractions at the top and it's pulling the rest of the, of the balloon up, yeah? So you can see it's pulling the sides up. So if you look closely, you can see already that the cervix has started to shorten. All right, can you see down here? So it's not as long as it was, okay. So it starts to shorten. So this is what we call a cervix that's effacing. And then over time, then it starts to gradually dilate. But you have to be having frequent, regular, strong contractions before, I'm not gonna do that on my, on my phone because I'll break the screen, before your baby is born. Way. <laughs> so it's not always as quick and as easy as that. But that gives you a bit of an idea how the uterus contracts to help the cervix to soften, thin out or efface and dilate.